So, hello everyone. How is everyone doing? I'm glad to see you all here. We've been through a hard time, right? Fighting with COVID-19. And we made it so far, so I think everyone deserves a thumbs up. My name is Nguyen Ming Yang, a rising 10th grader of Concordia International School. And fun fact, I'm a formal student of Vin School. It's my pleasure to come back here to deliver my speech. You know, there are thousands of reasons for me to participate in TEDx, but the two main reasons are to come back here, visit this beautiful campus again, and to accomplish from my dream, being a TED speaker. Vin School got me on the road of learning about leadership, and I did not expect to have such qualities in me, not even before joining Vin School, but I was totally wrong. Vin School enabled me to catch a glimpse of what is hidden inside me. The story began when I was in sixth grade. After an argument with a friend, I started to wonder, what are the qualities of a good leader? Since leadership is such an abstract concept, defining a good leader is not an easy task. That idea kept in my mind for about two years, and then one day I finally found out three qualities to become a good leader. I found it in a book called Leadership Genius, but they are also the three original ideas of Aristotle. He named them the modes of persuasion which includes logos, ethos, and pathos. But what do these three words mean? To the first word, logos. Translate from the Greek word logos to the English word logic. The original meaning that Aristotle wanted to deliver was a reasonable word. Personally, I think that reasonableness is a very common factor that people would want to see in leader. Just a simple question that we follow some of our illogical, not capable, stay silent with Tom, or whatever he or she says is just unreasonable. I bet that there are a lot of no's around here. And of course, we won't follow people that are illogical and stay silent when it comes to solving a problem. Now people might ask me, how do I do it? The common thing that I always do is to write down a clear plan to make sure they're all on board. I want to use my small recent project as an example to that. The very first thing I do when I became the leader of the project was to define the purpose and the aim of the project. So our purpose was to define uh, our purpose was to discover the history of Mesoamerica, and we aim to go as deep as possible. Then I need an action plan. For that part, I divide work equally, so no one was getting a ton of work. No one was getting nothing to do. Then I need a deadline for each individual because I don't want my teammate to turn in the work like two hours prior. Oh, to our presentation. But, you know, there is no such thing as a perfect plan, so that might be a problem the way. I need to figure them out beforehand. It could be lack of information, internet connection, or anything that interferes the progression of the project. Then I need a solution to tackle those problems. But they must be relevant, because they cannot be like finding how many sheep on a boat to prove how big the sun is. Anyway, what I'm trying to say here is you need to have a thoughtful mind and a logical plan to influence other people. The first word is logos. Moving on to the second word, ethos. Translated from the Greek word to the English word ethics. Aristotle believed that leaders influence other people because they are an expert of something. And we tend to follow people that are professional or an expert, right? Why do we follow doctors? Because doctors know what they're doing. Is certified for it, and that doctor badges on their chest show that they are authorized doctor. But I'm not telling everyone to become a doctor for credibility. Then how does each person build their own credibility? First, use proper words. People will not listen to a leader that sounds like he or she is uneducated, like using curse word or generally bad things. Credibility matters built that by being formal and impartial. Unbiased is also important. I know, I know it's hard to become unbiased since it's human nature to prefer something more than the other thing. However, becoming unbiased can help you to lower the tension among the member and balance the team. I consider myself as a friendly guy when I'm chit-chatting with my friend, but when it comes to group work, I have to be professional. I use proper words and try my best to be unbiased. And by doing that, my teammate will see that, oh, our leader is being serious, so we should do the same thing. That means I'm influencing my members. 
So the first word is logos. Second word, ethos. Moving on to the last word, pathos. It means experience, but it mainly talks about appeal to emotion and empathy. Pathos requires you to understand how people are feeling and really care for them. You have to be the therapist of the team by talking to a member, understand your feeling, and help them to find a way. I think that I'm experienced enough to see how important this factor is. Around a year ago, when I was a leader of a team in a competition, everything went well. But when it came to the part of understanding one teammate in motion, I didn't handle it so well. I didn't try to comprehend what that person was going through. And that cost me my team strength. We were having a weak bond. But I would not like to come to that part of the story. What I'm trying to express is understand how people feel it and empathize them for a leader is compulsory. Overall, understanding and using the ideas of multiple persuasion has bettered my leader skill and my style of skill as well. But I do not think that I am a perfect leader. And I do not think that there is any perfect leader. There are great leaders that have all three qualities like Nelson Mandela, Barack Obama, Uncle Ho. They are great, yet they still have their own flaws. What is important is that you learn from your experience, like I do. After each project, I evaluate what went well, what I need to improve, and that helps me to become a better leader and a wiser person. Now about the topic of learn to lead. I think it is a very practical topic and requires a lot of sharing. I love to share with guys the good and poor examples of leadership. And I did spend a lot of time thinking about this topic and finally came up with leadership since I comprehend an ancient wisdom of that. Now, apply this to the time when we were in the middle of a pandemic. Leading a, leading a community is important, but beside that, self-led is critical as well. You need to lead yourself in the right way. What I mean by the right way here is to have plan for yourself, understand, believe, and balance yourself. Combine this idea with leading a community. Imagine when a leader tries to lead a panic crowd. It is nearly impossible to do so, because when people panic, they tend to listen to themselves more, and that will worsen the situation. But if people know how to calm themselves down and lead yourself on the right way, it could make it easier for a leader to help lead a community. As I close, I want to share that I finally accomplished from my dream, being a test speaker, standing on this stage, talking about the idea that has been inside my mind for three years, most of Prisoner can guide us all. We need to lead ourselves while even trying to influence and lead other people. It is my hope that we students, the next generation, will better this idea, build on a work of who've gone before us, and become the brighter future of this world. Thank you for listening.